Well, hello everyone. I hope you are doing fantastic today. We are going to be reviewing Matt Walsh's new movie, What is a Woman? A very challenging question these days. First though, I need to acknowledge my bias. I am a huge Matt Walsh fan. I find he is one of the very few conservatives these days that still says things that surprise me. He's not just a walking list of GOP talking points like too many have become. He's edgy, but has touched grass, seems fairly mentally stable, lives his values, which means the man is ahead of 99% of political content creators today in my books. Also, random fun fact, that Dr. Phil episode Matt Walsh appeared on where he asked the infamous question, what is a woman that went viral? I was actually supposed to be the original pushback conservative guest for that episode, but was caught up filming my documentary in Mexico, resulting in them giving my spot to Matt. And as much as I would have loved to do the show, would have been a heck of a lot of fun, I could not be more happy that Matt ended up in my place instead, because the result was perfection. Can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? Well, Can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Because but, it's not for me to say. I, what is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not but myself. you used the well, word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women if you don't know what it means? Right? So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who... That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? And you know, now... This whole viral Dr. Phil clip, all of it has snowballed into this wonderful movie Matt's made. So basically, I made this movie happen by being in Mexico. I'll take credit for this all. You're welcome, Matt. And you're welcome, everyone else. I kid. But what I'm not joking about is how darn excited I am to have this straight white cis male explain to me what the hell I am. Because even I'm getting confused these days. But before we jump into scene one of Matt's new movie, a quick thank you to this channel's wonderful sponsor, Noble Gold. Over the years, you've probably tried different investments in stocks and mutual funds, so you know they can be volatile and unpredictable. But with inflation running at its highest rate for 40 years, do you really want volatility and uncertainty? Being able to sleep at night knowing your investment isn't about to crash is worth its weight in gold. And speaking of gold, if you've been jumping from one investment idea to the next, a gold IRA with Noble Gold is perfect for you. A reliable hedge against inflation just fell in our laps with gold. You shield your gains from taxes, you keep the real value of your wealth, you own a global asset, something tangible, and you can help protect your wealth against an economic crash. What is not to like? And this month, for every IRA above 20K, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin, completely free as a thank you. Call 877-646-5347 now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. Welcome back. All right, first things first, I am like two minutes into this film and already so happy, so happy. I have said it before and I will say it again, the right wing are abysmal at art. If you watch a right wing or alternative documentary, there's a 90% chance you're gonna be sitting through a slideshow or spliced together clips that a bunch of other people filmed. Conservatives communicate through statistics. They like their crime data, their immigration numbers, all of that kind of stuff. But the problem is the average person cares far more about emotion and beauty. And the onus is on us, autistic conservatives, <laughs> to learn their language, not just dismiss them with comments like, facts don't care about your feelings, because truth be told, their feelings don't care about our facts. It's that age-old quote of, 
Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Everything we do must take emotion into account if we want to have any political or social influence. Which is why I find it both fitting and ironic that Ben Shapiro, of all people, who popularized the facts don't care about your feelings quote, seems to be one of the first conservatives to acknowledge the right wing's desperate need to communicate using beauty and emotion as well, with Daily Wire now making their own films. Man. <laughs> I don't think I've seen right-wingers even attempt to make fiction since the Atlas Shrugged movies, and seeing how those went, I don't blame them. But, you know, Daily Wire stuff is a good start. I'm optimistic. And so far, the opening of this movie... Forget trying to figure out women. The real question is, what is a woman? It's cheeky funny, creative, and it's not just Matt Walsh sitting there reading out definitions and stats. He's not just in a studio room, staring soullessly into the camera. It's all very promising. I really enjoyed one of these starting scenes where Matt is presenting the questions of the movie while fishing, because he has a really fantastic way of intermingling this humorous, taking the piss out of the questions he's asking, while having some profound comments in between. He's sitting there out in the middle of nowhere, you know, Wondering, is there a truth? Is this what progress looks like? Can my boys really become girls? Do I have four daughters? Are any of my kids who they claim to be? Who are these people? Who am I? I better see a therapist. But also when he's out there fishing, he makes the comment that he really enjoys thinking in the great outdoors because nature seems to always tell the truth even when we don't want to hear it. So even within this kind of joking, mocking attitude, he's still hinting at some more serious themes of where the film is headed. Okay, so first interview of the film, <laughs> I'm already getting some Ali G vibes. It's very fun. I'm not sure if any of you have watched Ali G interview Jacob Rees-Mogg, but it is perfection. Which class is Packies in? Packies. By which? Which class? Is they in middle class, upper class? You're saying Pakistan is living I... in, in, in England. Um, they're not in a class um, by nature of where they've come from. What do you think makes a girl upper class? Well, exactly the same thing that makes a man upper class. But is it things it's... like she spits into a hanky? <laughs> um, I don't think spitting into one's handkerchief is widely regarded as a symbol of membership of the upper class. What uh, if someone is so rich they have a swimming pool? <laughs> Would they be the upper class? Um... There are very few people on this planet that can pull off these types of interviews where you ask questions that are obviously taking the piss to the viewer but you never break character or laugh, so your interview subject retains their level of seriousness. Matt goes out here with questions like... With the fluidity of these things, how do I know if, if I'm a woman? You know, I... I That's a great I like, question. I like scented candles. And yeah. I've watched Sex and the City. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So how do I know? Yeah. And the guy is still getting serious answers from this professional sex educator on camera. That question is like when it's asked with a lot of curiosity, right? That's the beginning of a lot of people's like gender identity development journeys. With her suggesting or him, I, I don't know what their gender is, with them suggesting that this could be the beginning of a gender affirmation story for someone, Matt. Matt doesn't have to actually say anything in this film. He doesn't have to say anything in these interviews. This documentary could be entirely just a show and tell of crazy. He interviews various progressive surgeons, academics, and therapists, and basically just gives them the rope to hang themselves with. Rhetorically, YouTube. Chill. Although the few bits where Matt does push back show a terrifying lack of thought these academics have put into their gender ideology, especially sinister considering some of these people are convincing and assisting children to transition, based on flimsy logic at best. When I see a child who, you know, believes in Santa Claus, and then let's say this is a boy and he says, I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. This is someone who can't distinguish between fantasy and reality. So how could you take that as a reality? 
I would say that as a pediatrician and as a parent, I would say how wonderful my four-year-old and their imagination is. This movie is a wild ride to watch. When Matt asks some of these people, professionals, to just define simple terms like gender and sex or woman, they are incapable of giving any concise answers. They basically go full Thanos and just say, reality can be whatever I want. What is a woman? Why do you ask that question? I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor who, who's, this is your, this is what you do. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? You just really don't want to answer the questions, well, do you? It's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? Uh, as a woman. I but just but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I guess it's, it's like, wh why are you asking the question? I think I, I, wa I want to understand sort of why that's so important. So if someone tells Just you... Just to, to sort of understand reality, you know? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Some of the more serious bits of this documentary include going over the impacts of trans athletes, interviewing teammates of Leah Thomas, the transgender swimmer who dominated the women's nationals, and these teammates were basically saying, you know, it's treated publicly as though everyone is just okay with this, as if all the ladies are like, sweet, yeah, you know, Leah, join the game. But the truth is, we would be called bigots and get forced out of our sport if any of us spoke up about our concerns. They've made it pretty clear that if you speak up about it and you say anything negative, that like your life will be over in some way. Like You'll be blasted all over the internet as a transphobe if you come out and then you'll never be able to get a job. Like Anyone who wants to hire you will look you up and see you're transphobic and your life will be over. Now, Matt really went all out for this film. He didn't just interview scientists, doctors, teammates. He decided to follow up these issues with trans sports and bathrooms with politicians as well. And I don't want to spoil too much, but the amount of people Matt Walsh gets to walk out of interviews in this film just by asking unbelievably simple questions is honestly impressive. There has to be some sort of record he's broken with this. I can't tell if Matt just has like an insane intimidating aura in person, or if all of these full grown ass politicians, academics, and adults genuinely have never had their beliefs questioned in their lives. Um, so, you know what, I think this interview is over. Yeah, I think yeah. we're gonna I think, I think this interview is over. I just had one last question. Uh, well, what, I, 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 what, the interview's what, over. We want to know what, they're fair, I just wanted to know what is a woman. And you're not gonna find out. But despite all these hangups, Matt won't take no for an answer. He needs to find out what this mysterious mythical creature dubbed a woman is. And clearly, the West doesn't have the answers. <laughs> we did once upon a time, but not anymore. So Matt goes on a damn safari to Africa, Indiana Jones style, to retrieve the grand missing treasure, the definition of woman. For a man, he has a penis. For a woman, he has a vagina. So we know this is a lady, this is a man. What if it's a woman with a, what if it's a woman with a penis? What? We then discover the African people are all just bigots. So Matt must continue his journey. The last half of the documentary gets a lot darker and a lot more serious, but it still flows well and this change of pace was absolutely needed, especially because Matt moves from this role of asking questions about transgenderism and kind of having these funny Ali G interviews to going over the real world consequences of people ignoring his difficult, in fact, not really difficult, his simple questions he's been asking the whole film about gender ideology. The consequences such as people having to detransition because they were incorrectly identified as being transgender, parents having their kids taken away over this gender ideology stuff, or even worse, those dealing with severe medical issues that they were never warned about from their transition surgery. 
What? That's a phalloplasty. That's a bottom surgery. We have five children's hospitals in the United States telling girls that they can be boys at $70,000 a pop in a surgery that has a 67% complication rate. That will kill me from infection that I can't sue on. We're butchering a generation of children because nobody's willing to talk about anything. I mean, this section is heavy. It's all truly, truly heart-wrenching stuff. Nobody would help me, including the doctor that did this to me because I lost my insurance. I get infections every three to four months. I'm probably not going to live very long. Given these kind of emotional interviews he's had, Matt obviously decides to hit hard on some of these doctors operating on kids and pushing for medical transitions. And none of them seem to grasp or care about the potential consequences that Matt is highlighting. It doesn't seem they have even thought about it that hard at all. When asked questions like, when should a kid start transitioning? The typical answer is, whenever they feel like it. <laughs> I mean, I was so shocked to see how little, just how little thought these people had put into something so potentially catastrophic for others' lives, for children's lives. I don't even want to say these people, these experts, these people that we're supposed to put our trust into in society have no good answers for these questions? At what age does the medical transition begin with uh, medication? So medical affirmation begins when the patient says they're ready for it. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders? You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview because it seems like it's going in a particular direction. Oof. Well, at least we have one expert with good answers to questions. I wasn't expecting this. Very exciting, though. The man, the myth, the legend, Jordan Peterson, makes an appearance in this film as well. Am I going to affirm what you think? No, it's not up to me to affirm it. You don't get a casual pat on the back from a therapist for your pre-existing axiomatic conclusions. That's not therapy. That's a rubber stamp. The introduction of Jordan Peterson brings about the conclusion of this medical piece of the documentary, which was just done so well. Matt basically has various medical professionals come on and say what a lot of us kind of assumed anyways, that no, you can't do decent research on trans issues in this current political environment. No, you can't speak up if you see flaws in the current approach. No, medical professionals are not giving people the best advice right now because politics has become intermingled with medicine. You're going to lose your job if you speak against trans ideology. Absolutely impossible to do good research. You basically have to decide beforehand what you're going to find so that you don't upset activists, and that is not how you do science. And then, at last, around one hour and 11 minutes in, Matt truly finally discovers the crux of all the West's problems. Um, I am a wolf theory and, and a member of the furry fandom. When and how did you discover this inner wolfness? Um, probably around age 10 or 11. I was watching an anime about wolves, an anime. Japan's revenge on America for those nukes. But on a serious note, the end of this documentary gets into what they call a social contagion phenomenon, a deep cultural sickness pushing young people towards gender ideology and this kind of drive to follow this popular trend. My pronouns are he, him, and demon, demon self. I've been going by they, them pronouns for four years now. I'm they, pretty comfortable they, with it. I Pronouns. There was literally a period of a few weeks to a few months. I started out as an ally, and then eventually I was starting to identify as transgender. We are trans models. So they go on the internet and they're told that all of their problems will be solved if they become a man. How this culture and Hollywood has made people's superficial identity the most important aspect of themselves rather than, say, their career, their family, community, or morality. Looking back on it, it was the same pattern. Just kids who were really struggling, kids who were very alone and isolated. They have anxiety. They don't fit in with their peers. They don't know where they belong. Maybe they didn't have a welcoming family life. They just got caught up in these communities online. Then they discover, hey, there's this group of people. And they also don't fit in. They're different. They're not sure who they are. Gee, that's where I fit in. But the big question at the end of this film truly is, 
Does Matt Walsh ever discover what a woman is? I've included a lot of spoilers in this review, but to figure that one out, you're going to have to watch the film yourself. And I would recommend it, seriously. I'd, I'd give this film a 9, 10 out of 10. It's pretty close to that. Genuinely, super well done. So many critiques political films get are that they almost entirely feature experts and interview subjects on whatever side of the political spectrum the filmmaker is on. But this film didn't do that. It was genuinely 50-50, a really, you know, mixed variety of interview subjects. And Matt truly just gave everyone a platform to answer his questions. It just didn't seem like the progressive voices could do that sufficiently. And no, Matt didn't go out of his way to find idiots. In fact, he went out of his way to find experts. So the fact that these progressives made fools of themselves, the fact that gender experts and medical professionals couldn't answer the simple question, what is a woman at all, that is not Matt Walsh or The Daily Wire's fault. Instead, it is a massive expose of some serious, serious flaws within modern gender ideology. <laughs> now, I have barely even scratched the surface of what is in this film. And it's actually extremely funny to watch and well-made. So if you are interested, I have, of course, included the link down below this video. Please do check it out. And no, I have not been paid to review this film or anything like that. Although, I did get an early viewing, which was pretty lit. <laughs> Hence why I got this review out like an hour after the film was released. Or I just have superhuman powers. I don't know. Either way, the film is out now. And you should absolutely go watch it because it's freaking fantastic. So it is down below in the description, in the comments section. Go check it out. Let me know what you thought. And I will see you all next time.